Hello, and welcome to this Apex SQL source control video, in which we'll show how to associate a Team Foundation server work item ID with a change set. As a starting point, we have a database linked to a TFS repository and all objects initially committed. Let's switch to the TFS side for a moment. We want to verify that there are sample work items that we can use for the purpose of this video. Showing only bugs on TFS, we can confirm that there are bugs we can use. Let's get back to SSMS to make some changes that we will associate with a TFS work item ID. For example, we'll add a simple column to a table, assuming that this is something related to one of the sample bugs on TFS. If we go back to the Action Center tab, changes will be detected. Let's refresh it in order to bring up a change we made. Now that we have a change that we want to commit, let's associate it with a TFS work item ID. In order to do that, we'll check the object that we want to commit. In this case, it is only the address table. Note that in case multiple objects appear as different in the Action Center tab, any of the objects or set of objects can be selected to be committed in a single change set. When the comment box appears, We'll first associate a TFS work item by specifying pound A followed by the work item ID and after that we'll provide a commit message. Once this is done, we'll click the Apply button to commit this change. After a change is committed, let's switch to a TFS side to check if the specified work item is associated with the change set. We can check TFS through Visual Studio by navigating to the Source Control Explorer pane. We'll right-click a project and select the View History option from the context menu. When the list of committed change sets appears, we'll double-click the most recent one that should be associated with the TFS work item ID. This will open Change Set Details in the Team Explorer pane on the right. Under the Related Work Items node, we can confirm that a bug that we have specified in the commit message is successfully associated with this change set. We can check the same through the web interface by navigating to the specific project. When the project is selected, we'll select the Change Sets option from the code menu. This opens the same list of change sets we have checked through Visual Studio. We'll click the most recent change set which is the one at the top of the list, as it should be associated with a TFS work item ID. When more details appear for the selected change set, we can see there is one work item that is being referenced in this change set. By clicking this, we'll get additional information about the exact work item that is associated with the committed change set. Besides associating a TFS work item ID with a change set, we can resolve a work item in the similar way. Before showing this, let's make sure we find one unresolved work item. Browsing through bugs, we can verify that some of these are active. We'll pick one that will be automatically resolved after committing changes to source control. Now, let's get back to SSMS and make another change in the database. We'll refresh the Action Center tab and check the Modified Stored procedure. In order to resolve the specific TFS work items, we'll need to specify it in the commit message. Unlike associating a TFS work item ID with a change set, when resolving a bug, instead of the pound A tag, we should use pound R, followed by a TFS work item ID that will be resolved and a commit message. Once this is committed, let's check if the specified work item is resolved. We'll get back to TFS and navigate to Change Sets, picking the most recent one. It says one work item has been associated. To verify it is also resolved, let's open the specific work item. As shown in the State column, this is resolved. We can confirm that from the Work Item Lifecycle. We can confirm that this specific work item is resolved with the most recent change set. Using this approach, any existing work item on TFS can be associated or resolved with a change set, no matter if a TFS on-premises is used or Visual Studio Team Services. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsql.com.